Does clipping or defanning stress the plant out? In this video, we're going to get into it. You're here with Mark Batwell at PerfectGardens.com. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Need a great deal on a propagation package? Well, come to here to PerfectGardens.com and check out our cloning kits. Or if you just need the accessories, come to Grow Essentials, come down to Propagation. For all your propagation needs, make sure to use the promo code PROPAGATION for an additional discount. Okay, great question from Hartler. That's great for cloning, but why would it stress the plant by clipping its leaves? Okay, so in this video, we're talking about trimming up the bottom one third of your plants. The reason why you would want to trim the bottom one third of your plants is because maybe you're cloning your genetics, you wanna bring them indoors because you're cloning off your outdoor plants bring them indoors and you only have roughly a month i've kind of explained all those other things there's only a couple different scenarios that come into mind when someone says clipping or defoliating so for clipping most of the time people are referencing that when cloning and i've heard a lot of different philosophies are behind it the one that makes the most sense to me is the at the end of that leaf is the most sensitive so by cutting the leaf it removes the part of the leaf that's most sensitive that could get mold more often. Over the years, I've actually changed my technique. Instead of clipping the leaves, I just give more space for the clones. I don't cram in 50 clones. Even if there's 50 plugs, I will put in 35 or 30 clones because I'm really looking for 30 excellent plants or excellent clones. I'm not looking for 50 mediocre clones, half of them that have mold. A lot of them came out, didn't even root. I'm looking for 30 perfect clones. So the reason why you would want to clip the leaves is really only like the leaves may be touching the soil initially when they start growing and that's just because there is a lot of disease or bugs that kind of like that higher humidity environment and you're just once again removing foliage and once again guys we are coming from an era of growing indoors right so these people that are growing indoors are always trying to mimic what's happening outdoors and because the light is nowhere near as powerful as the sun indoors than outdoors other issues arise through a higher humidity and when you are growing indoors you're defoliating at times to reduce the actual humidity that evapotranspiration that's happening in your room and you need to reduce the humidity because later in the flowering you're going to run into powdery mildew or mold so there's reasons why you want to clip your leaves and i know again in this video i was using my outdoor plants to use it as an example because i was only growing two plants last year and i was just using an example for a video for youtube I've had some blowback for growers growing outdoors, not really understanding, really me not putting into the right context. Although going back to it, yes, no matter what, if you take leaves off of a plant, you're going to stress the plant out. The plant is going to have to recover from that photosynthesis i mean obviously the plant is produced the leaf because it felt or required it so that it could grow properly and so when you're removing it in some level you're traumatizing the plant and no matter what that's going to cause some stress although you are doing it indoors or outdoors or whatever your growing situation is because if you don't you know through experience because you don't have the right equipment you don't have a strong enough dehumidifier you're overgrowing your room the way you feel your crop grows the best what Whatever philosophy you're going by, taking leaves off of your crop is creating the end outcome you're looking for. Other reasons why you would want to clip off the leaves is you might have a bug problem or an aphid problem or a powdery mildew problem and taking the leaves off of your crop or off of the, the plants helps keep control over those pest problems or over those fungus problems. So in a sense, you're stressing out your plant a little bit now so it's not stressing out more later these are all things you as a grower are going to have to kind of comprehend and figure out what's going to be best for your crop that year if you're a larger grower you're going to have to decide whether those techniques are worth it for your larger crop is it worth putting you through the stress of defanning your crop because you think it's going to bring in a better yield is it worth you teaching your employees these techniques you know and and trying to incorporate it in your overall growing program these are 
are all questions you as the head grower of your operation, whether it's just a single light all the way up to a major grow operation, you have to decide whether these things are right for your growing technique or your growing operation for that year so that you bring in the harvest. That is what matters. This is something that I think so many people get caught up. They get caught up in all these little different things that you could do in between the planting of the seed and the harvesting of the plant, maybe even just the curing of the plant or long-term storage of the plant. They get caught up on all these hundreds of different things in between. Just focus on that, that bigger perspective, right? Put the seed in the ground, make sure to harvest it, dry it, cure it, and store it properly. Water in between. I know I'm simplifying this process, but I'm trying to put the highest priorities up at the top. And then I'm trying to make recommendations as the priority list goes down, right? So the highest priority is putting the seeds in the ground. Without you putting the seeds, you're not going to have a harvest. And then at the end, you have to make sure to harvest it. If you can't harvest it, it's going to go to rot. Next step is curing it properly. After you cure properly, you store it. From there, it's about recording your metrics year after year, crop after crop. And if you get a high yield on one crop and then a lower yield on the next crop, well, what did you do different in between? And if you keep recording great notes, over time, you're systematically going to develop your own growing practices. I hope this video was helpful. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great grow, everyone.